today we're going to talk about timbre, which is a very kind of odd word. It's spelled T-I-M-B-R-E, and it must be French because we pronounce it timbre, not timbre or something other. Don't call it timbre though, because then everybody will know you were not being smart at the concert. So what is timbre anyway? Timbre is a unique sound that everything makes. Imagine this, your phone rings, you pick it up, say hello, person starts talking you know by the sound of their voice that that's your mother. She doesn't have to say, hi, this is mom. You know what your mother sounds like. That's because your mom has her own unique vocal timbre. Everybody does. That's how we can distinguish things when we can't see them. So humans have their own unique timbre. So do all the instruments. So when we're listening to music, that's what we really listen for. That's the sound that we're going for. So far, we've talked about all the little bits and pieces that make up the music, but we have to have sound to make all that happen. So we're gonna do a little bit about that sound today. So everything has a timbre. The human voice is obviously the one everybody's got. You carry it with you everywhere. It's your permanently portable musical instrument. So let's talk about the different types of voices, and you'll be very happy to know I'm not going to sing for you because I can sing, but it's not really pretty. And so we'll give you some really nice examples of YouTube videos that you can go to after you've listened to this, listen to some good singers demonstrate each of the different vocal types for you. So let's start with women singers. First, we have soprano. That's the voice everybody pretty much knows. Uh, when you think opera, that's what you think. You think high, screechy soprano. Although a good soprano is not screechy, and we hope you will learn that as, um, through the course of this uh, class. Then we have sort of the medium high female voice, which we call mezzo soprano. That's M-E-Z-Z-O, it's Italian, and it just means medium. So it's a medium soprano. For a novice listener, it's kind of hard to tell the difference unless they're singing really, really high. So if you can't tell the difference between a soprano and a mezzo, no big deal. Generally, a mezzo has a, a bit more uh, mellow kind of voice, like we talk uh, about instruments having mellow sounds. Singers also have that. And then the third female voice is an alto, or a contralto, which is sort of the formal name for that. You don't hear very much of that in popular music or even in the opera. It's um, a low female voice. It doesn't project quite as well as a high sound does. As you know, like a trumpet, you can hear that for miles. But if you're playing something like trombone, it's a lower sound. It's not going to carry as much. So the female singers, we usually hear mezzos and sopranos. But those are our three vocal ranges. So now we go to the men's side of things. So we have the highest male voice, which is the tenor. You don't hear many tenors in popular music. Um, you really have to be trained to sing well as a tenor. When you hear a high male voice, um, or what, a relatively high male voice in popular music of any type, that's generally going to be a baritone. They might have a few tenor notes, some high notes in them, but mostly they're sort of in the mid-range, um, what you would sort of think of as a normal voice. So tenors, high, Again, you might think opera, if you think about uh, the three tenors, everybody knows them, so there's your, your high tenor voice. Baritone's in the middle. And then the bottom, we have the bass, and that's B-A-S-S, -S, like the fish bass, but it's bass, not bass, so again, don't embarrass yourself by saying that was a nice bass there, uh, which is the low, deep voice. And whereas we don't have many contralto parts in opera or other vocal works, we have lots of bass parts. There's sort of a tradition of of knowing what the character's function is or what kind of person they are based on their vocal range when we talk about opera and other kinds of uh, dramatic works. So if you've got a big booming bass guy, he's usually a bad guy. And just like the black hats in the movies tell you that, that, that that's the bad cowboy, deep bass voice tells you that could be the bad man. Or the alternative is that he might be a comic character. So if you've got um, a sort of bumbling servant or um, maybe the town barkeeper, somebody like that who's not supposed to be noble and um, sort of upright, they'll make that person a bass. So if you go to an opera or some other kind of vocal thing, you can say, oh, well, that character is probably not our hero because the voice range is lower. So the hero is usually a tenor. Um, servants who are not bad guys or, or who have uh, significant roles usually have that middle range. So like in Mozart's Marriage of Figaro, Figaro is the star. It's his, you know, his name's on the opera. But he is a servant. So he's not a tenor, he's a baritone because it just wasn't done that a tenor would be a servant. So you can sort of identify characters based on their vocal types 
and all sorts of vocal music. So again, we have soprano, mezzo-soprano, contralto or alto, tenor, baritone, bass. We describe the human voice that way. We also have boys' voices, you know, because a boy's voice doesn't change to being tenor, bass, baritone until he reaches puberty. So when we talk about boys and their voices, we will call them boy sopranos or boy altos. While they still have high voices, we don't call them just plain sopranos. We identify them as being boys so you know that their voice is going to change. So we're going to use those same terms in talking about all kinds of instruments. When we talk about the way that instruments are organized together, or what we call orchestrated, we'll refer to them as being a soprano instrument or a bass instrument. Obviously, the tuba is a bass instrument. It's very big, very deep. Trumpet is a soprano instrument. Uh, the flute is a soprano instrument. Some instruments even come in multiple sizes with different names, like the clarinet. There's the soprano clarinet, which is the one that most people know. There's a little tiny one below, it's even smaller than that, that's uh, also called a soprano, but it's like a different key. Then there's an alto clarinet. There's a bass clarinet, not a baritone. Saxophones, there's soprano, alto, tenor, baritone, and bass. So we use those same terms that we use for vocal ranges to talk about all different kinds of instruments and the way that we structure the notes within the music. So it's really important to understand the relationship, what's high, what's low, what's male, what's female, and then you'll be all set to talk about vocal parts.